Hey Biggies, welcome back to the Craft Beer Channel. You might be wondering why I'm stood in the corner of a brewery. That's because we're about to talk about these lovely barrels behind us. I'm down at Yonder, uh, which you may remember from our foraging video where we made a nettle, uh, a nettle pilsner with them. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something deeply unsexy, uh, but also never really talked about on YouTube or indeed anywhere, or even researched that much, which is the pellicle when it comes uh, to brewing wild ales. And we're going to have a chat with their uh, founder Stu about what a pellicle is, what it does, why it does, uh, and why it's such a beautiful, strange alien thing. So I'm here with Stu, who you may remember from the last time we came down to Yonder when we were foraging for nettles. Today we're back to talk about something equally unappealing on the surface. Ha! On the surface. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk about pellicles, which is a weird bacterial f structure that you get on the top of lots of wild beers. What actually is a pellicle? What's it made of? So a pellicle is sometimes referred to as a, a biofilm, um, and it's made up of a combination of cells, proteins and polymers, which binds together in a, in a thin uh, layer across the top of a, a liquid specifically a liquid containing microbes for, for fermenting uh, wild beers. Mm -hmm. It's still open to a lot of research to say exactly why it's there or what conditions causes it to happen, but it's in the presence of oxygen, basically. So it's the bacteria looking for oxygen, yeah. there's not enough in the beer, so it's going to the surface where there where, might be a where thin layer Where there's it. contact with, with oxygen. Right. So for example, Protanomyces, um, it is, prefers aerobic fermentation, which is fermentation in the presence of oxygen. Um, and so that's where it gathers and creates, yep. creates this biofilm. Um, so it's made of, of the bacteria itself, plus like weird secretions that's helping it bind. Yeah. What, what's the actual purpose of a pellicle biologically? O other than searching for the oxygen, is it doing anything else? Why is it shaped the way it is? Well, it, I think some theories also that it, it protects the liquid from the oxygen. So I think this is where there, there needs to be more, more research, really. So it's sort of almost like a barrier from other infection coming in, yeah, maybe? Yeah, possibly. So the research in that, right. It's also a really good opportunity to point out, although it looks like and to the untrained eye it can be confused for mold, yeah. it's very much not mold. No. So it has a, has a dusty appearance sometimes, but mold is, is a very different thing. So, well, we'll get onto why they all look different in a second, but the, the most fascinating thing to me while we were talking about earlier is the fact that the, the bubbles, I've always assumed that was just some weird like bacterial structure. The reason there's bubbles is just because of the CO2 bubbling out of the beer catches onto a bit of film. Yeah, so it's just like a balloon that's, yeah. that's filling. Yeah, sometimes you'll get tiny little bubbles. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you'll get really big ones, depending on, I guess, the, the, the tension in, in the film. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you sort of get strands coming out from those bubbles as well, so it kind of looks like an alien. Yeah, it seems like like the, the veins sort of go yeah. into the bubbles, and it's, it's a mad thing. It's like an alien world when you look into these things. Even in some from the surface, you'll get strands going down into the liquid as well. Um, again, I don't know what the purpose of that might be, but you see that more in um, sort of a vinegar mother, so acetobacter, right, okay. um, or a scoba used in, mm. in kombucha. So it seems that most of the research is, is directed towards acetobacter and like vinegar production. There's not a huge amount of it in beer right now, is there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I think people are starting to look at this a little bit more. Yeah. Um, is, is it a good sign, a, a pellicle? Does there need to be a pellicle? I think that's another thing that's kind of debated and disagreed upon really because you can have a fantastic sour beer that never forms a pellicle. Um, some people say you've got to wait for the pellicle to drop into the beer before it's ready but you know there's cases where that's not necessarily true so, yeah. so it's, it's just it's whatever's opinion. working for the beer you're making yeah. and the brewer has it's to It's opinion come rather from. than fact I yeah. think at this, at this stage. And so what are the features that make these pellicles so different because it seems like like in, in the, the pellicles that you have in your IBCs and in here, they all look completely different, but some of them are the same beer that presumably yeah. have the same culture yeah. that went in there initially. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it allows you to, um, if you have two different vessels with the same liquid, obviously you know that it's not the liquid or the yeah. conditions in the liquid that are affecting it. So maybe one's open more to oxygen or the brett has, has grown more in, in one of these than the other. Mm. Um, and the same, yeah, barrels will always be, always be different. Because, yeah, in those two IBCs, you've got the one on the left, which is, it smells like crystallised pineapple, loads of Brett character. Yeah. And the other one's got a slightly more lemony, aceto, acetic, yeah. acetic character. Um, 
and the pellicles are very very different looking so it does imply that whether it's the bacteria the level of oxygen or whatever it is it, there's all these things interplaying it's like this little world that's developed in its own different ways i don't know if it's if it's true or not but my overall impression has been that if you see that thicker dusty looking pellicle that's usually Britannomyces um, and the thinner more with strands in it is yeah. is something like Lactobacillus or Pediococcus. And why doesn't a Saccharom Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces uh, <coughs> strain produce these pellicles? I think some wild strains of Saccharomyces do right. um, but I think it's just the way that we've we've conditioned uh, and I guess mutated strains of yeast. Right. So we've almost bred out that yeah, exactly. characteristic and chosen yeah. ones that don't do it for many of the other characteristics that they might might end up having. Yeah. Right, interesting. Well, that is a super quick video about what a pellicle is. Uh, if you ever get bored on the internet, search for beer pellicles because they are as rich and varied as, as, as humans are. Um, if you're a home brewer, you didn't brew a wild beer and you get a pellicle, uh, panic? No, embrace it. Embra embrace the pellicle. Well, that's from a wild <laughs> beer, <laughs> wild brewer talking. <laughs> if you go for a West Coast IPA, maybe, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a have a good scrub and a good clean. Um, so yeah, guys, if you've got any questions about pellicles, about wild brewing, uh, put it in the comments below. We'll hopefully get back to you or on Twitter, at Beer Channel. Uh, and if I don't know, I'll pass it on uh, to Stu and he can answer them. Uh, thank you very much for chatting. I'm just going to leave you, perhaps with that do 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 music and just show a load of pellicles. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>